You are listening to For a More Radio, your power station with powerful teachings from the Word of God. Well, praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Charles E. Brown with Prevailing Faith Broadcast. I'm the pastor of Prevailing Faith Bible Church located at 1111 Plaza Boulevard in Monroe, Louisiana. God has afforded us this opportunity to share a word of truth. We've been invited by Dr. Amori and my beloved friend, Pastor Dennis Hamilton. We take this opportunity seriously because we got so much going on and we need to put ourselves in a position that you can hear a word from God that will encourage you, enlighten you, correct you, and lead you that you might be fulfilling what God has promised. My favorite scripture comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. So what that says to me, and it should say to you also, if we would put our heart, our trust, our life in his word, he will give us the strength and the ability to get past everything we're dealing with because there's a lot of things going on. I take him at his word. He said in Jeremiah, he says, he created the heavens and the earth and there's nothing too hard for God. And I believe that God can get us through what we're dealing with. So if you let everyone know, every Monday evening at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, Prevailing Faith Broadcast will be airing. You can also find us on Facebook under Prevailing Faith Church. So we want to be an honor and an inspiration to each and every one that will open up their hearts and hear thus saith the Lord. So let everyone know we're coming on the air. So tell one and all that we're going to be here each Monday evening at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Well, I bring you greetings in the matchless name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I'm your host this afternoon or this evening, Charles E. Brown with Prevailing Faith Bible Church. I want to give a big shout out to my Father, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost for bringing me to great people like Dr. Moore and my dear friend, Pastor Stephen, Dennis Stephen Hamilton, how they've offered me this opportunity and, and I trust that the seed I'm sowing into you will bring back a great harvest and great manifestation in your lives. As we dedicate this service each and every time that we come before you, 
because we want to honor God. We want to remember him. And I want to just take a moment before we go any further to invite him in to this person, this service. Dear Lord God, what a gracious and honorable privilege it is to be welcomed into the kingdom of God, to have the position and authority in your grace and love that you have welcomed us in your mighty presence, that we might speak your truth with boldness, with accuracy. We might yield to you and honor you in each and everything that we do as we give glory and praise to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, Father, I yield my lips of clay, my heart to you, that you might speak through me, that I might be able to enlighten, encourage, and even correct those that need to hear a word from you. As we come before you now, in the matchless name of Jesus, we say amen. Well, I trust that you had a joyous and a happy holiday. Because as you've been listening to any of our programs, God keeps dealing with me about his great and mighty love. And I I picked it up from Ephesians chapter 3 that you might see it. And I'm going to read it from the Amplified Version. Ephesians 3 verse 19. He says, And that you, the people, the body of Christ, may know practically through the personal experience. Let me tell you now. And that's what that's what can be missed by, by people that don't know God. This is personal for us. This means a lot to us. That's why we sound a little excited or we get ex- we, we, we have some exuberance about us because we know and recognize all that God has done for us. How he's opened his heart and gave us a privilege of endless possibilities. Glory to God. And it says in the Amplified, it says that you may come to know the practically and through his personal experience, the love of Christ. Oh my God, what, what gets me is that don't take for granted what our Lord and Savior did on behalf of humanity. What a remarkable statement of unselfishness and love. What a privilege and honor is to be in a relationship with, a, with God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And to remember that even though humanity, mankind, screws up, God still wants to have a loving and caring relationship with each and every human being that will let him. And he says here, he says that the love of Christ, oh, that resonates in my heart. The love of Christ, the supernatural love of God, the agape love, the love that is not selfish, the love that will not hinder, but the love is always trying to promote God and strengthen. The love that offers us the privilege of saying, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm asking your forgiveness. <laughs> when I say that, I think about if y'all watching any Tyler Perry plays, you'll hear Mr. Brown say, so you got to say, I'm sorry. Well, you need to say you're sorry. You need to ask God forgiveness because you've not recognized or you've not walked in or you've not yielded to his love. And he did it all for you as well as for me. Because everybody, you know, they celebrate the Easter holiday or they celebrate this time of the year and um, they want to give Easter eggs, they want to put out a rabbit. I still don't know what the deal is with the rabbit, but maybe somebody else does. But I want to know in a greater way, God, what you mean by this? What do you mean by this? This, this love that you give me. Because I know for me, I'm talking about me personally. I was a very selfish person. I know y'all don't know anything about that, but I'm talking about me, not you. And being a selfish person, person, you always thinking about you. What's in it for me? What can I get out of? What can I do? What What's going to happen on my benefit? And your main topic is you, 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 you. Or, or let me say it this way. You join the opera, me, 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 me. But God wants you to look at life entirely different than the way the world does. And that's why he says in Romans 12, I got to change your way of thinking. 
I'm going to move into your heart, transform your heart, and then I got to renew your thinking. Because then if you don't learn how to renew your thinking, you'll be like a three-year-old kid that doesn't want anybody to play with their toys. You don't care about nobody but yourself. And that's all you're interested in. Let me go back. Let me, let me see what he says. And that you, he's talking to people, may come to know, do you really know the love of God? Do you really have a grasp that the love of God has been given to you? He says that you might know the love of God through experience. Because, see, if you know his love, then you can be a witness. Yes, Lord. You can go before the grand jury. You can go on the TV. You can be a good witness for the goodness and the grace of God. And he says, the love of Christ, which far surpasses, glory to God, the mere knowledge without experience. Now, see, you know we're living in this violent world. We're living in the greatest country in the world, the United States of America. And we still have problems getting along. We still got issues looking at people because of the color of their skin or what nation and what nationality they come from. Instead of looking to see what their heart is. Because the Bible tells us, it says, win the laws, not make the laws serve God. It's not going to work. You got to win them. And so that's why people mix it up. He says, he says that you might experience. Because in Big John 13, 34, he says, a new commandment that I give you that you might love one another. Why, God? Why should I love mankind? It's because God loves mankind. And if God is living in you, you should love mankind also. And then the next verse, he says that people might know, yes, Lord, that people will know that you belong to God. Because you're different. Because you're finding ways to show the love of God. You're finding ways to show up and minister the love of God like never before. You quit tearing people down. And it doesn't matter if people don't believe like you do. Love them where they are. Love them and minister to them because that's what so many get. You know, I hear people, you're going to hell. You can't put me in heaven or hell. God created it and he decides how I get in and how I and how I miss it. No man can tell me I'm going to hell. Or send me to hell. Only God and I can do it. But God wants you to know. If you will walk in this love. This is a supernatural gift people. This is a gift from the glory of God. It is proof positive. That you have been changed on the inside. Think about it. We're celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Did you read the history? Did you take the time to see how he came to this earth, knowing who he was in, in our Lord and Savior, knowing he was the beloved Son of God? He knew who he was. But he gave up his crown to walk upon this earth, to give us an example, like he says in 1 Peter 2. And what a remarkable, remarkable example he gave us. He came here to give us an example. Yes, Lord. That no matter what you have or what you're entitled to, you can walk in this purpose and this God-given choice of walking in love. Because Jesus walked in love. He was persecuted beyond measure. You know, we read through the history yesterday, some of it, how they took a uh, 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 it took uh, a thorn and put it upon his head with with sharp edges to put to press him against his brain. They beat him beyond. They beat him mercifully, and Isaiah said he was beaten beaten beyond human recognition. But he still did it. Oh God, you talking about a love? See, this kind of love is spiritual. Well, you love the will of God more than what you're going through. Oh, I'm ready to shout right there. You love the word of God more than every attack Woo! the enemy has sent against you. No matter who's turned against you, who's turned for you, but you love God so much. 
Oh, I thank you, Lord God, for that old song that said, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey. Been through hell, been through high water, but I'm not turning back. Because 99 and a half won't do. I'm mixing them up, but y'all know I'm old school. He says how Jesus Christ wants us to experience that same kind of love because he had to walk in love and faith to allow mankind to humiliate him, to discredit or challenge everything he said and everything he preached. Oh my God, I... (laughs) You know, some preachers can't handle it when you question what they're preaching. So I try and do my best to stick as close to what the Word says and not give you my opinion. Because that's what people get it. You know, I hear people, and what do you think about uh, same-sex marriages? What do you think about homosexuality? It doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what you think. It's what the Word of God says. If God says no, that's it. Now, if you want to not do it, that's on you. Doesn't mean he doesn't love you. But according to his word, you have denied his presence in your heart. Because when you love someone, when you love someone, you want to do things to be a part of them. You know, that's a bad Louisiana habit, I guess, to say you know. But when you love somebody, you want to be around, you want to be around people, you just like to hear them talk, like to hear what they got to say, it just blesses you, it encourages you, so you want to be around people that you can hear their voice, or hear their instruction, or you ever be around somebody you really like, because see, it's kind of like, but it's at a high level, you know, when you're a teenager, you can pick sometimes the wrong people to follow, (laughs) <laughs> like I did. You can pick the ones that you thought was so cool. But God wants you to pick him all the time. Because he's the real, he's a real deal <laughs> that will steal your heart. Let me go back to reading this. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 19, the Amplified. And that you may come to know mm, practically through personal experience, the love of Christ. Mm -hmm. This is the foundation of your relationship with God. Operating in the love of Christ. Is that you? I want to operate in his love. I want to be in a position that he can have his way with me. Because see, when you love someone, you're doing everything you can to show them love. Um, my wife's birthday was a few uh, uh, last month, and so I did things to show. I got um, I got her some little trink, some things that I knew she would enjoy. Why? I'm wanting to show her love. What can you give God to show Him love? How can you show God who has everything? Because that's what I have to deal with my wife. She can buy whatever she wants, except a new vehicle. She want me to pay for it. Now I'm going to do it. God not going to do it because that's love. But what can you give God who has everything? First, it starts off with giving him yourself. Secondly, it starts off with giving him love. Giving him the love back that he's given you. Because he's loved you unconditionally. He knows you got your left eye where your right eye should be. He knows your right ear is where your nose should be. But he still loves you anyway. Because he says in Psalms, he says, you've been fearfully, yes, Lord, and wonderfully made. God loves you. And he loves you so much, he's willing to come in and live. Woo, glory to God. And live on the inside of you. But it starts with you opening up your heart and say, Lord, I invite you to come and be a part of my life. That's what I want. What about you? I want you to have your way with me, Father. I want you to be able to flow with me each and every day. Amplified, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 19. That you, glory to God, be filled up, yes, Lord, 
throughout you and me. I mean, oh my, you know how great it is. See, it's hard to minister to people who don't know anything about love, who've never been in love. What was that old song, old song we used to sing? There were the birds and there were the trees, and I never saw them singing until that was you. And what he's saying is, when you're in the spirit of love, everything starts to look beautiful. Everything starts to have a certain fragrance and a reverence about it because, you know, that's one of the things I enjoy about the spring is that plants that have laid dormant for the summer, the spring, that one of the most pretty trees or uh, uh, bushes in Louisiana is, is, is uh, um, azalea trees. And they, sp and they come up in these vibrant colors, this, this, this kind of a violent reddish purple and white and you'll see them all over Louisiana beautiful trees and they bloom every spring and it's such an awesome thing to see and sometimes some of them will will come back later on in late summer or, or, or early fall but in the spring you can count on them and it's like when you look at the plant it looks like you're just seeing a a whole flower bush because it's so magnificent. But that's what the way God wants to be with you. He wants to see his love manifesting in you. Can you walk in this love he's talking about? He says that Christ, which far surpasses the mere knowledge without experience, that you may be filled. Yes, Lord. Lord, fill me. <laughs> Feel me. What's so good about being filled? Because every time you move, you got overflow. I mean, man. <laughs> you ever fill up a drink or a, a glass too full? And you're trying to get it to your mouth and you spill a little bit, but that's okay. You still got plenty left in the glass. I'm talking about non-alcoholic. Stick with me. Don't leave me. He says that through your being to the fullness of God, so that you may have the riches. Oh my God. God wants you to give you this rich experience of the God kind of love. Well, you don't hate anybody. I'm not telling you. And I always have to go there because I can hear you. Well, you don't know what they did to me. Well, what did you do to God? God was willing to forgive you. You forgive them. Don't, don't misunderstand me. I always have to put this in there. You may not be able to let them in your house or by your children or by your spouse. You may not be able to let them in your neighborhood. You may have to testify. You may have to witness them being in prison or you witness them being electrocuted. But your part is, I love you. I forgive you. I don't agree with what you did or how you treated me, but I'm going to walk in love towards you. And walking in love means that sometimes I got to cut you off. Because you don't, you can't handle this kind of relationship because you're constantly abusing it. Oh, I'm speaking to you now. You're in a relationship where they're constantly verbally and physically abusing you. That's not God. That's not what God wants for you. He wants you in a relationship where you can love them and they can love you back. Where you can grow and be who you want to be. You know, because I, I, I go to sometimes, I went to it last week, Proverbs 18 and 2. It says, it says a fool, a fool have no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. And then what I like about it in a uh, complete Jewish translation, he says, a fool takes no pleasure in trying to understand. He only wants to express his own opinion. You ever dealt with somebody like that? The whole conversation is about them. You can't, you can't get a word in edgewise. All they want to do is talk about them. And they may be a very interesting person, which, which uh, I'm sure they could be or maybe they are. But for a conversation, you, I'm, I got to be willing to listen to you and you got to be willing to listen to me. And that's why, you know, I, I listen. And then there's some people, it's just hard. 
Because once you don't agree with them, they're going to argue with you. And, and, and it, gets, it gets to be a real challenge. When, and, and, and the sad thing about it, they may be right, but sometimes as a human being, you got to say things out before you realize they're wrong. You get what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to say something stupid to realize that's not right. Let me get this correct right now. Okay. You get, I, I trust that you understand what I'm trying to say. Because sometimes you got to just say it before you hear it's wrong. And once you hear it wrong, then make the correction. I'm not saying that you can't verbalize because we got to talk. Because I've done counseling. And one of the things that it helps when you minister to people is if you get them to hear what they're saying and they recognize that it's of God and that it's not. And if they recognize it, they can make a wise choice. Amen? I believe I got it out. Thank you, Father. He says, Ephesians 3, ch chapter 3, verse 19, that you, the body of Christ, may be filled up throughout your being, oh my God, to all the fullness of God, so that you may have the richest experience of God's presence in your life. That's what he wants. And look what he says, completely filled and flooded with God himself. <laughs> I like that. What about you? Yes, Lord, I want to be completely filled with you. I want you to have your glorious, magnificent way, Lord God. I want you to move on my behalf, Lord God. I want to flow like never before because it is of great value to me to live and do it God's way. Because as I pointed out what God was dealing with me about, because a lot of what we've been teaching on our Wednesday night service is based on wisdom, making wise choices, making decisions that God can honor and that God can glorify and that God can fulfill. And one of the things is about wisdom. The Bible says wisdom is too high for a fool. See, you know you're foolish when you don't want to change, when you don't want to learn how to forgive people. Because the problem is when you're dealing with a fool, let me help you. When you're dealing with a fool and they've done you wrong, they don't know it. Because in their twisted thinking, they think they're right. Come on now, I've known people that were thieves. And they th they don't think it's they don't think it's wrong to steal for somebody who worked really hard to accomplish what they have. They think they got a right to steal it. No, you don't. You don't have a right to steal anything. That's one of the Ten Commandments. Thou shall not steal. But warp thinking people. <laughs> warp thinking people think it's okay to steal. But it does not mean that you should not protect your goods, put a lock, put an alarm, and protect your goods, yes. But I'm going to forgive you, but you're not getting in my house. If I see you, if my camera pick you up, I'm calling the police right then and there. And if you come in my door, you better be, I hope you're right with God, because you may be getting a meeting. I should be making them threats. <laughs> but what I'm saying to you, When I walk in the love of God, it allows God's wisdom to show up in my life. It allows me to be who God really wants me to be. And it allows him to protect me and guide me because he knows in this wonderful thing called life, I'm going to run into some stupid people. I'm going to run into some people that don't believe God, that don't want God, don't want nothing to do with him. I'm going to run into some people that don't care because I watch how a drug addict serves their God. They will do any and everything for their God. Will steal, lie, cheat, kill, rob, disrespect their mama, their daddy, their cousin, anybody. Because they are serving their God. I'm glad I serve a God that wants me to show love and not hatred. Not one that keeps me bound up because I don't like the color of your skin. And not realizing that God did it on purpose. He made us all different colors and different nationalities. 
because his whole commitment was for us to become one. Haven't you read uh, Corinthians uh, 1 and 12 where he says that we are all one in the body of Christ? We've been washed by the same Holy Spirit. So you're not any better than me and I'm not any better than you. But I have a loving, caring, supernatural relationship with God the Father, the Son, and His Holy, and His Holy Spirit. And that's what God wants us to know, people. He wants us to learn how to walk in love. Because listen, you got people that are so angry. And the Bible says, if you're going to be angry, don't sin. You have authority over the devil. Get, put him in his place. Put him under your feet. Because we got people that have been cooped up for this past year because of the pandemic and the coronavirus. They're acting irrational. And some of them who've had untreated mental illness are having some extremely difficult times. And so God told us first to pray for them, that they'll get the right help. And I believe in spiritual help first. I believe you should be connected to a Bible-based, God-fearing church first. And then I don't, I don't have a problem with medical assistance because if your faith, <laughs> I always remember, like I said, the dentist. I've been, I've been blessing my dentist. <laughs> She's doing a good job. She's very patient with me. But when you have issues in your mouth, especially in your teeth, it's right by your head. It's hard to get your thinking under control because I've had an abscess. That's no fun. An abscess in my tooth. And basically the only thing to really help you is to get, it, get filled with antibiotics. But it's illegal for them to give you antibiotics without a prescription from a doctor. So what am I saying? It's okay to get medical help. Or you can pray and say, God, which doctor should I go to? I, look, look. For those of you that were super spiritual, I do lay hands on myself and I do confess by your stripes I'm healed from the crown of my head, the soles of my feet, tips of my fingers. But if I'm in a position health-wise and my faith is not at the level to run it off, then my next step is, God, I know you can, you're going to make it work for my good. Show me which doctor you're going to send me to. And if I go to one and I don't get bad witness, that's the right one. I go to another one. I get a second, third, or fourth opinion. But I'm not going to ignore what's going on in my body. Oh, yeah. Quit, quit treating your physical health like a bill. <laughs> you can ignore the light bill all you want. But one day, and it won't be long, you're going to wonder why the lights are gone. Because you've ignored the bill. You still, you still mortal. You still have a physical man. We're talking about a spiritual transaction where you have the love of God in you so gracious, so mightily that you won't let a, a irreverent or evil thought come against somebody. You won't, you won't covet your neighbor's wife or your neighbor's husband, or you won't look wrong at your neighbor's children, you want to do what is right before God. Why? Because God called me to walk in love. And I'm going to walk in love. What about you? I'm going to let the spirit of the living God use me. Because I remember as, as, as we, went, we went through it, that uh, Jesus was persecuted. You know, everybody didn't believe him. They question his authority. They question his right to say he was the son of the living God. They question everything he did. And then the very people he came to save turned on him. You ever been there? That's no fun at the beach, I can assure you. That's no fun at the beach when the people you came to help turn on you. Been there, done that. Been there where you trying to help the person and they reject you. They call you everything but a child of the living God. And what do you do? I'm going to walk with God. I'm not going to let what you say or what you do hinder me. I'm going to walk with God. And I'm going to love you even though I, I, I wish we could have gotten along. 
I wish we could have had a better relationship. But Jesus was persecuted, was questioned. And then Pontius Pilate said, look, I'll let Barabbas out. I mean, I'll let Jesus out. And Barabbas is a murderer. Nah, we won't. We want you to crucify Jesus. Oh my God. Can you imagine that hurt? He had to experience when he loves you so much. He was willing to do this and you say kill him. Wow. Is that what you're saying to God right now? He's saying walk in my love. Let me lead you. Let me guide your life. But you would rather say kill him. No, God. I want you to live. I want you to live big and graciously in me. I know it was part of what you had planned to restore to us, but I still can imagine it was hurtful. It was hurtful them to persecute him. It was hurtful them to embarrass him. And, you know, in front of everybody, crucify him. Then to top it off, they, uh, they put the thorn of crowns on his head. They stripped him of all his clothing. They beat him beyond human recognition. They spit on him, one of the most humiliating things you could do to a human being. They spit on him because they were challenging his authority. Oh, my God. They were challenging who he really was. But you see, what helps me, his walk with love and faith was so committed that he would not let what humanity did against him stop him from fulfilling what God had told him to do. Because remember, Jesus loves the Father. He loves him so much that he did whatever the Father said. Even though he was the Word, and I, I always remember this scripture, Jesus said, I can call 144, a legion of angels. Yes, Lord. And he can stop all this. See, that's why I know God didn't call me to be Jesus. It's too late anyway. But I would have called them angels when you start spitting, when you start stripping my clothes off. Oh, no. Uh, angels, get them. <laughs> no, God sent his love. That's what he was showing us. And that's what confuses the devil and his bunch. They can't understand this type of love. This unselfish love where you don't care what you got to go through or get through. You're going to do what God says because you love God and you love humanity. Because I, I've watched people, you know, people that have gone into various places. They've gone and risked their lives, risked their relationships just to win the loss. And here you don't want to go to church. These people going into the deepest, darkest parts of the world. Going into places where, if you just mentioned, I always remember this woman we met at camp meeting many, many years ago, who was a missionary in China. And it was so secretive, she didn't even want to tell us her name. Because she knows that she had to, she could be in prison, or the people she ministered to in prison if they even knew what she was teaching them about Jesus Christ. And I've heard stories that they would have maybe one page of the Bible. Wow. And they just keep going over it. Keep going over it. <laughs> you don't even read the Bible. You got all 66 books. You got, you got it electronically. You got it to where it read to you. You got it where you make a TV program out of it. But that's not going to be me. Is that you? So no, God, I love you, and I love mankind. So I'm going to make myself available to them. And Lord, however you want me to help them, just show me how I'll do it. Because I want to be on the Lord's side. What about you? I want to enjoy the fruit of honoring God. And he says, Jesus was the thorn, crowned with thorns, beating me on human recognition, spent on him, and then... Mm, 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 mm. made him carry the cross to his death, knowing that they were going to kill him. But he did it in a, anyway. That's love. That's love. Knowing, because I, 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 
I can't remember the brother's name, but he says, Jesus did all this on an if. He did it on the if that you might receive salvation. That you might accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. He did it on an if that you might appreciate what God did for you. Oh, Father, I appreciate you. I appreciate you being patient with me. He was patient. Whew, he was so patient with me. He loved me even in my darkest times on this earth. He loved me when I backslid from him. Yes, Lord. He loved me when I when I did like Peter. I rejected him. I said, I don't know Jesus. <laughs> he loved me even when I did not respect him. But, oh, God, I'm so thankful that we're in a great supernatural relationship now to where I hear from you and you hear from me. Because if you want God to speak to you, just open up the Bible and read it aloud. You got to remember, when they kept saying, hearing his voice in the Bible, they were saying that because they didn't have a written Bible. They didn't have all these recording devices. I was thinking about that the other day. I have to have one that with a ear clip because I got small ears. But I'm very careful what I send straight to my brain because I like to hear music. I like it loud. I like it jamming. But I like it more than anything. I like the gospel. I like preaching too. I love to hear the word of God. Why? Because Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Because the closer I walk with God, the more I need to walk by faith. Why? Because he keeps opening my eyes for, I, for me to see all he has in store for me. And for me to do that, I got to stay on point. And staying on point is walking in love. Because remember, this is an act of love, unselfishness. Because Jesus was perfectly innocent. Because Pilate said, I found no fault in this man. Wow. He can find fault in me because I still had to work on my anger sometimes. I had to work on my attitudes too. I had to work on every aspect of my life. Why? Because I'm not perfect, but God is. I <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for reminding me of that. I am a born-again believer, but I still have flaws. The only perfect one in the relationship between God and me is God. So yes, I know you may see sometimes an example, but remember 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1, Paul says you can only follow me as you follow Christ. So you're going to be held accountable whether I make it or not. Now I'm doing, I'm believing God not to follow. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But you can't blame God for what men do. Wow. Thank you, Father. I like that. You can't blame God for what you see men do. you got to go to God and know him for yourself. Because, you know, some, well, y'all, you know, I hear people trying to um, correct their prophecy because it hadn't happened the way they thought and all like that. I said, y'all, apparently y'all didn't read 1 Corinthians 13. Because right after you read about what love is, in the latter part of that chapter, he tells you, he says, we can only prophesy in part. None of us know it all. We can only say in part. So God knows. And then even though you can, you can have the prophecy correct, but men can corrupt what God is calling them to do. Because in Jeremiah 29, 11, he clearly says, I have a plan for your life. But if you refuse to go to him and get his plan, then you broke covenant or you honor the will of God. And that's what he wants us to hear. The first part of the plan that God has for us is for you and me to walk in the God kind of love. That's why I want to be. What about you? I want to be surrounded by the love of God. <laughs> I laugh because I've heard people pray that prayer. Oh, Lord, I want to work around a bunch of, bunch, bunch of Christians, a bunch of believers. 
Then when you get there, Lord, they too spiritual. You can't say, you can't sneeze without them saying, God bless you, glory to God, they won't preach to you. No, you just got to walk in love no matter what aspect or what area you are in life. And you got to be a witness. He told you in Revelation. He says they were won by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Not you beating them up, but you living it. Sometimes your greatest testimony is not in what you say, it's what they see you do. Yes, Lord. Because you got to train yourself. Say, God, I want to follow this example that Jesus said. I like the benefits of honoring you. And so Jesus unselfishly went to the cross because he loves mankind. And he, lo he loves his father and he loves mankind. He did it because he knew this is how mankind can be restored to him. Because all through the Old Testament, they would talk about the spirit of the Lord will come upon them. And that, and that, but then in the New Testament, when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, now everybody in the body of Christ now has God living in the, on the inside of them. And you can know it because they're walking in love. Because they're walking in love. They're walking in the God kind of love. Is that you? I'm trying to find you in this. I'm trying to find that. I'm trying to find that in you. Is, John, is God walking in you? I got to go there. Go to John 13. Because I, I don't want to misquote it. I want to say it correctly. 34. Well, why do you keep going over the same scriptures? Until, until we get it, we keep going over it. And let me help you. Whenever you read the Bible or read a scripture, do not get too familiar with it. What I'm saying is, yes, you may be able to quote it or read it, but listen to it like you never heard it before. Why? Because the word of God has great depth in it. And as you keep meditating on it, it will grow and increase in your heart and in your life. Because the Bible is, the scriptures are continued revelation. And God wants to give you continued revelation. Big John 13, verse 34. A new commandment that I give unto you, that you love one another. And look what he says now. As I, this is Jesus speaking. As I have loved you. Wow. So when you think about this, this kind of love is, un is, is an unselfish love. A love that will give their all. Because see, that's why we don't have to be concerned with what we give because God's going to use it to bless us. Whatever we give, he says, you're never going to outgive God. Never. I don't care what you give. You're never outgiving. But he says, I want you to love one another as I have loved you. Yes, Lord. That you also love one another. He's talking to the body of Christ. The world can't understand this. This doesn't even make sense to the world. How are we going to love people that have disrespected us? Who call us out our names? Who, who have misused us because of the color of our skin? Or our ethnic, ethnicity? I'm going to love you. But I'm going to teach you, I'm not going to put up with this. I'm going to teach you that I'm going to stand for what is right. And, and, and you know, and this is, what, this is what gets me so much, is people. One of the great gifts God gave you is his word and the ability to pray and he'll answer prayers. But you know what another gift you have in the natural? Voting. You need to vote. You need to vote and you need to write and announce what principles you stand for. And let, let those in authority know because I'm telling you, a politician recognizes voting privileges. And if you have votes or a collection of people that are voting, you can influence what the politician does. 
and they need that kind of influence. That's a good place to say amen. But look what he says here. Big John 13, verse 34. A new commandment. This was not in the Old Testament. This is New Testament. I give unto you. This is what he called us to do. That you, the body of Christ, should love one another. As I have loved you. That you also love one another. And look what he says in verse 35. By this, by this, yes, Lord, shall all men know. Mm. Do they know that when they walk into your church? Wow. Do they know that when they, when they meet you at the grocery store <laughs> and when you cut them off for that parking space? Then you go inside. <laughs> then you go inside and then you standing right in front of them at the line. <laughs> Or right behind them and you, you're nervous when you realize, that's the person I cut off in the parking lot. <laughs> no, I you know I know, I got this from uh, Dr. Joyce Meyer. She says, about putting up your basket. Well, God took me to another level. I put up my basket and I also, if I, if I thought I took your parking space, I'll back out and let you have it. And then, I, uh, you know, because I need to exercise anyway, I need to walk. I, I, I should not be so aggressive that I forget about the other person and take a parking space. Y'all get that tomorrow. But verse 35, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. Yes, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I thank you, Lord God. Because come on now, you talk about love. Jesus knew uh, Judas Iscariot was going to betray him, but he didn't put him out. He gave him a chance to not do it. But Judas was so caught up in his emotions, in money. And then when it got over, well, he didn't even want the money. Money was too hot, he couldn't even stand in heaven in his presence. He says, by this shall all... I'm sorry. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. Are you a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ? We'll know that because if you have love one for another. That's how we're going to know it. That's how God's going to know it. This is how you know it too. Because I have love one for another. God, I love you. I love people. I love them with the love of the Lord. I'm here to help them, guide them, strengthen them, and lead them in the direction you would have them to go. Thank you, Father. Let's go back to Amplified Ephesians 3. verse. Now we're going to read verse 20. Because this is the part we always want to get to. But you need to read the part about love first. Because you can have great wealth and great success, but if you don't have love, you're missing the point. That's why I go back to that statement from this movie with Billy D. Williams and um, Diana Ross, which she was playing um, mahogany. And Billy D. Williams said, what good is success without somebody to enjoy it? I always remember that line. And look what he says in Ephesians 3, verse 20 and Amplified. Now to him who is able to carry out his purpose and to super abundantly more than all that we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, or dreams, according to the power of that is at work within us. Yes. Now unto him that is able to do the exceeding abundantly above all we ask a thing. That's who I'm working for. How about you? So my dear listener, what you think? You think you can walk in love? I mean, God knows you can. But you got to be willing to let him change you. And oh, like the old sermon says, what a wonderful change it is. 
What a privilege it is to be changed into the love of God. So I just want to take this time. I do this after every program because we're planting seeds and sometimes we don't know what ground is going in. But I know if we say thus saith the Lord, it will reach the richness of the hearts of mankind. And I just want to ensure before we let you go that I introduce you to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I'm going to need you to stop what you're doing, close your eyes, open your heart, and repeat what I'm about to say. This is based on Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Now repeat what I'm saying. Dear Lord God, I believe that according to the word, you sent your only begotten son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, to this earth. He was persecuted. He was beaten beyond human recognition. He was ridiculed. He was placed upon the cross. He died. But on the third day, you raised him from the grave. And now, according to your word, that if I confess Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, I shall be saved. Now, the next part of this prayer is what we should pray all the time. It's based on 1 John 1 and 9. And that's, this is what you pray all, this all the time because God made a way for us that we make mistakes and we can get it right back with him. And say this with me, say, Father God, you promised me, you said that if I ask for forgiveness, you are faithful and just to forgive me of anything I've done against you, my fellow man, or even myself. So, Father, I sincerely ask your forgiveness, and I receive your forgiveness in the glory, glorious, matchless name of Jesus. We say amen. Well, glory to God. Praise you, Lord God. We celebrate with you because each time you somebody says that prayer, then you have put yourself in a position that you receive the born again experience and Jesus rejoices with you. Now, I just want you to know the next step, the next most important step is for you to go to God and say, God, lead me to a Bible-based, God-fearing, God-loving church to teach me your ways. You need to learn his ways. And he's prepared great and wonderful ministries all over the world to help you be who God's called you to be. Well, we certainly thank you for being a part of this program. What a privilege and opportunity for to be a part of the lives of other people. And I pray that this program has enriched you, enlightened you, and given you great encouragement. And if need be, correction. Because God loves you and we love you. And that's why we're doing this. We're so in and we believe in by faith. We're sowing good seed in the good ground. And so for you, we need for you to give us a harvest. You can inbox me on Prevailing Faith Bible Church on Facebook. Or you can email me at pastor at prevailingministries.com. Let us know if this program has been a blessing to you. If it's been an enrichment or enlightenment to you. Because we're about blessing the people of God or encouraging those that will hear a word from God. Well, God bless each and every one of you. We'll be back Mondays at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. God bless you. We'll see you then. This is Pastor Charles E. Brown with Prevailing Faith Broadcast of Prevailing Faith Bible Church right here at 1111 Plaza Boulevard, Monroe, Louisiana, 71201. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow at High Noon Prayer. Ha, 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 ha.